Hey there, and welcome to The Walking Dead Reviews, starting with Season 1, Episode 1. There will be spoilers in this, just to let everyone know who is watching this. And I will start off with the quick overview. So, in the wake of a zombie apocalypse, survivors hold on to the hope of humanity by banding together to wage a fight for their own survival. And they are basically right, guys, but the way they do it is just insanely done. Um, and I will get more into that. The cast, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to mash up the names here, and I do apologize for that. Um, I'm going to start with Andrew Lincoln. He plays Rick Grimes. Uh, John Bernthal, he plays Shane Walsh, which is Rick Grimes' partner. Uh, Sarah Wayne Callies, I'm pretty sure I might not be saying that right, but she plays Lori Grimes, which is Rick Grimes' wife. Uh, Lori Holden, she plays Andrea Harrison, an interesting character. Uh, Jeffrey Damon, he plays Dale Horvath. I, I like that character of Dale. Uh, Stephen Yun, he plays Glenn Ree. He is a pretty cool character. Um, Chandler Briggs, he plays Carl Grimes, which is the son of Rick Grimes and uh, Laurie Grimes. And you get to watch this kid grow up on this show. Uh, Lenny James, he plays Morgan Jones. He is a very, very interesting character throughout the series. Emma Bell plays Amy Harrison, who is Andrea Harrison's younger sister. Uh, Michael Rooker is on this show, and I love that fact because I am a big Michael Rooker fan. And he plays Merle Dixon, and I just love the character that he plays. He plays it very well. Uh, Norman Reedus is also on this show. He uh, plays on Boondock Saints 1 and 2 and other films, and I like him on those, and I like him on this. He plays Daryl Dixon, which is Merle's brother. Excellent parts they both have. And Melissa McBride plays Carol Pelletier. I'm pretty sure I'm not saying the last name properly, but uh, she starts off as a weak character, but turns out to be a real badass, guys, I'm telling you. All right, now, episode one is called Days Gone By. It starts off, a sheriff's car can be seen driving uh, down a road and comes to a stop. A cop gets out of the uh, the vehicle with an empty gas can and walks towards some turned over and abandoned vehicles. He comes up to a gas station and he walks more towards it um, and he ends up seeing a sign that says no gas. He ends up turning back towards his car and he can hear some footsteps so he ducks behind the car and crouches down and starts to peer under the vehicle to see what it was and he sees a little girl's legs and sees that she kind of stops and picks up a teddy bear. So he calls out to her and... As the girl turns, he can see she has clearly been dead, with a massive face wound and skin paleness. She starts to uh, growl and move towards the cop, and the cop shoots her in the head. Now, I'm going to kind of throw a spoiler out there. The cop's name is Rick Grimes, and he basically is the main character up to a certain point in the series. Now, the title pops up. Now they show two cops sitting in a vehicle, and one of them is Rick. And after they talk for a bit, you end up finding out that the other one, his name is Shane. And um, they end up getting a call over the radio about two guys that are heading their way. They have already shot a cop or two, and they are armed and dangerous. Uh, the cops head off, uh, which is Shane and Rick, uh, with some other officers. They make a roadblock and lay down some spike strips. And then you can see the two guys in the car. They're getting closer with the two cop with two cop cars chasing them, which forces the car into the spike strips, making the car roll over. And once the vehicle stopped rolling, all the cops start to move in slowly. 
uh, one of the car, uh, the guys in the car comes out shooting and the cops kill him, which is the very first kill in this show. Uh, the second guy comes out shooting as well and gets killed by the cops, and that is the second kill. Now, thinking that's it for the guys because that's what they heard over the radio, Shane rushes over to Rick seeing that he's been tagged, and he, only in the vest, thankfully. The guy sneaks out of the rolled over vehicle and shoots Rick right in the shoulder, like from behind type thing, uh... Right in the armpit, like right underneath the shoulder, guys. I can just imagine the pain from that shot. Uh, either way, Shane shoots and kills the third guy. So that's the third kill on the show. Uh, an ambulance comes for Rick. Now, Shane can be seen visiting Rick at the hospital from time to time. And Rick eventually awakens and he starts talking to Shane only to realize that Shane is not there. Uh, deciding to get up, Rick stumbles to the floor. He hasn't walked in a while and calling for help which no one comes uh, so he decides to get out into the hall now rick is in the hallway and he sees uh, the hospital is a mess he walks towards the phone at the desk which does not work um he ends up making his way around the hospital peering into some windows and he ends up seeing a dead woman on the floor where her head is the only thing that is unscathed uh, he ends up continue walking um and he comes across some walls with bullet holes in it and shell casings on the floor. And at the end of the hall, there's two big doors. And Rick can read on it, don't open, dead inside, painted on the doors. And he hears some noise coming from the other side of those doors. And Rick kind of watches as the doors kind of open a little bit. But they're kind of blocked by a 2 by 4 and a chain around the handles. But there's a little slit that opens up. And some fingers start poking out and uh, freaks Rick out. So he frantically rushes out into a doorway that leads him to a staircase leading outside. And once outside, Rick can see bodies wrapped up lying in rows and lots more placed on the back of flatbed trucks. And I mean like a lot of bodies, guys, like 50 to 100 or more. And um, he starts walking. Uh, he walks past the hospital gates now. And not five feet away from this, there is um, a military outpost set up. And he ends up walking past that as well. He um, comes across a bicycle and sees his first undead that starts to crawl towards him. Rick takes the bike and starts to bike home. Once he's at home, he starts to call out to his wife Lori and his son Carl. After some time of not seeing them around the house... Rick breaks down and then decides to go outside where he ends up getting hit in the head by a kid with a shovel. Uh, the father of the kid sees he is not an undead and brings him brings him into where they are. And when Rick comes to the father of the boy that got hit, <clears throat> that hit Rick, sorry, wants to know what kind of wound he has. And Rick being kind of confused if why is that so important uh tells him a gunshot wound and the father asks him uh not a bite or a scratch and rick said no only a gunshot that he knows of the father of the boy then shows rick a knife and tells him that if he tries anything he won't hesitate to kill him and also when he is able he can come out of the room and talk with them after some time rick decides to come out and starts chatting with the father and his son and shares a meal with them. Uh, they chat more. Rick finds out all about the walkers and what has happened so far through the father. Um, a walker sets off a car alarm nearby the house that they're staying in. And we also find out the boy's name is Dwayne. So peering out the window, Rick can see walkers all over the street. One of the walkers, it turns out, is Dwayne's mother. And... She ends up walking over to the door of the house and tries to open up the door by turning the doorknob. And the uh, it goes into the next day and Rick, Dwayne, and his dad decide to go out and they kill some zombies on the way and uh, th they make it to Rick's place. Rick tells Dwayne that he thinks that his wife and kid are alive and because their dressers are empty and there's no pictures in the house whatsoever, 
Uh, Dwayne then mentions they might have gone to Atlanta for there is a refugee center there. Uh, Dwayne's dad tells Rick that it is supposed to be a big one with the military and CDC. Rick ends up bringing them to the police station to shower and get some supplies. As they leave the station, Dwayne and his dad decide not to go with Rick. Rick hands them a walkie-talkie radio and tells him he will try to contact him every day at dawn. Uh, Walker ends up walking into a fence trying to get closer to Rick and the, the gang, Dwayne and his father. But Rick tells Dwayne to go with his father and he's got this. Rick walks over and shoots the walker right in the head, which I thought was pretty cool. Now Rick in one vehicle and Dwayne and his dad in another, they end up leaving in separate directions. Um, then the camera kind of pans over to Dwayne's father and then back to Rick and then Dwayne's father and back to Rick type thing. And they're showing uh, Dwayne and his dad boarding up the house that they're staying in and then they show Rick stopping his vehicle and at the place where he first saw the walker, which was at like this park, which is trees and grass, not slides and swings. And he starts walking around looking for this walker that he saw. And then it goes back to Dwayne and uh, Dwayne's dad. And Dwayne's dad is looking through a window upstairs uh, through um, a sniper rifle scope and starts to shoot some uh, walkers in the head while Rick finds the, the first walker he sees again and shoots that walker in the head. And back in the sheriff car now, Rick is using the police radio to try to contact anyone who can hear his voice. A young woman and an older man with a group of people can hear him. They try to respond, but it ain't getting through. Then a guy walks over to try, and when he gets closer, you can see it's Rick's partner, Shane. He, he tries it with no luck. The group with Shane starts to talk on who is going to try to find this guy. And decide no one's go and uh, no one goes alone, and one of the women walks off in a hu in a huff. Uh, Shane follows her. They start talking. They end up kissing, and just then the woman's boy walks over, and Shane and the woman stop kissing instantly, trying to hide it. Shane walks off as the woman talks with the boy. Now back to Rick. He lowers his sun visor in the car, showing a picture of himself with his wife and son. The very woman Shane seems to be banging right now. Uh, sticking the picture of him and his family in his pocket, he gets out of it, out of the car uh, with some supplies and finds a house. He starts yelling out and knocking on the door to see if anyone is there that may have some gas he can borrow. Peering through the window, Rick can see written in blood on the wall, God forgive us. The camera pans down showing a dead man in a chair with a hole in his head and a shotgun laying beside him. Camera then pans down more lower, showing a dead woman on the floor with blood around her. Flies buzzing all around the house. Rick then sits for a minute to gather himself from what he just saw and realizes that there is a vehicle. So he opens the vehicle door and he starts searching for the keys and realizes there is none. And as he starts to walk back to the house, Rick hears a horse snort. And he turns and he looks at the horse and... Next thing you know, he settled up the horse and he heads into the city on horseback. Now, slowly going through the city, Rick starts coming across some walkers, but keeps going. Rick now hearing a helicopter, he races to the sound of it and comes face to face with a horde of walkers. As they surround him, he falls off his horse and the walkers start to eat the horse. Uh, some walkers start to go after Rick, uh, frantically looking for some kind of help. He realizes that there is a tank right next to him, and he climbs underneath it. Um, walkers start to follow him underneath, and he starts to get surrounded by them all. And he starts shooting a couple of walkers in the head, and thinks for a split second to maybe shoot himself so he doesn't feel the bites. And as he goes to look up, straight up, he notices there's a hatch open under the tank. So he crawls in through the hatch into the tank and close the hatch down, and scurries over to near the back of the tank and not realizing that there is a dead soldier right next to him. Rick grabs the gun off the soldier and in doing so, the dead soldier moves his head showing he is a walker. Rick quickly and stupidly shoots the walker in the head, killing it and deafening himself momentarily. Rick then decides to stick his head out at the top of the tank and sees his duffel bag full of guns in the middle of the horde. 
As Walker starts to climb on top of the tank, Rick goes back in to the tank for safety. Just then, he can hear someone over the radio calling him a dumbass. The camera then pans over the area showing the whole horde of walkers, some eating the horse, others banging on the tank, with more walking towards that area. Then finally, the credits roll. Now, what I liked about the first episode, I thought it was a very awesome introduction to the show. I loved the way the zombies looked. They were very well done. Only thing I do wish about it is that they showed what type of virus caused all of this to happen. I think that would have been a cool thing. And I really would recommend this show to any horror fan, really. Um, I find it has a great storyline, it has some great effects, and some awesome characters in this show. And um, I know it's not for everyone, some people don't like it, but uh, I love it, I do. And um, that's going to be it for the review of the first episode of The Walking Dead. And I do ap apologize for the lengthiness of this review, guys. I greatly appreciate whoever watched it this far, and um, like I said, if you have never watched this and decide to, I do hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Thanks for your time, thanks for watching, take care all, and here is a trailer for this episode. Hope you enjoy. Ciao. Protection, shelter, food. He told people to go there. Said they were working out how to solve this thing. Atlanta sounds like a good deal. Look at one thing. They may not seem like much one at a time, but in a group all hungry. Man, you watch your ass. Hello? Damn it. We ought to warn people away from this city. Looks got no idea what they're getting into. 